Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I thought we would do a colour with me in this book by Diane DeFall. And if you followed my channel, you know I absolutely adore her. And my favourite book of hers is Furballs. But this came out on my birthday this year. So May, that's how long it's taken for me to get round to it after having been off ill for a while. <coughs> so I'm still recovering from this hideous cold. So excuse if it goes quiet, because I will use my editing suite to get rid of my cough. So this is Sirens of the World, and I adore it. And I have, um, I've got a couple of copies, actually. Um, and this is the page I thought we would have a go at. This beautiful mermaid and her little, I don't know what they are. I found them on the internet, but I don't know what they're called. Um, this beautiful lady here. I thought we'd have a go at her. So unusually, I'm, I'm going to do the background first. And the reason for that is there's quite a lot of space. And I want to continue with our budget pencil series. So yeah, you guessed it. I've got the Arteza out. Arteza Expert. I haven't used these in a long, long time. And I've also got my um, Ahoo Who markers out and um, I think that's it, a Hoo Hoo Markers. Oh, I have to use, um, I'm just using my generic ones. These are, um, well, I, they're the same as touch markers. These ones are called Adaxi. Um, but if you look, most sets on Amazon that sell them are the same names and the same colors. And this one has been refilled with the touch refill, which is, pale baby blue and that's what I'm going to use for the background so I'm literally the big spaces I think it will be the the just the C um possibly a bit on her tail maybe on her tail and the rock that she's sitting on just so I don't have to work so hard with my hands so if I bring you in let's find a nice little section to start this blue on and I've tried watercolor and I did think about doing watercolor but the paper doesn't like it at all but it loves Let's, where are we going? Let's just do a little bit because you don't need to sit and watch me doing alcohol marker, do you? You'd be bored. Uh, it does love the alcohol markers. Um, this looks a little bit dark to start with, but it won't. When it dries, it's a really pretty colour. So um, I've had many sets of alcohol markers, little sets, until I invested in the Ahoo-Hoo's. Um, and all of them being on Amazon and and then was absolutely disgusted and appalled to find that um, they're all the same sets. Well, actually, it's not disgusted and appalled really because it makes life very easy for us, doesn't it? So I'm going to do the entire background in this, what did I say it was called? The words will be on the screen, 144 Pale Baby Blue. Um, carefully go round everything. And it it really does like these markers. It doesn't seem to doesn't seem to streak. I know I haven't done a big space yet, but um, it doesn't seem to streak. I've got a thick sheet of acetate behind my page. Although these are single sided, I would hate for it to go through onto another page. So you could either have um, an acetate sheet like me, or you could just put a couple of wedges of scrap paper behind, bit of cardboard, anything that, that is non-porous that you can work on comfortably, put it behind your page just to protect it. So and the reason why I'm choosing this one is, like I said, I've got a refill for this one. The Hoo Hoo are coming out with refills. In fact, I think there might be some available on their website. So there are some little, little tiny bits there. So I'm just going to dab it in, let it spread out by itself. Um, yeah, they're, they're, I think there are some available. I, I did um, enter their competition to test their refills, but sadly didn't win. But there we go. So if you just pick little spaces to fill in first, Then you won't get as many streaks, hopefully. Okay, so I will go off and finish my 144 Pale Baby Blue over the entire background. 
and then we will meet back up. Um, the paper is very thick and lovely in this book, so it's going to take a while to dry. So I will go off and do that, and then we'll meet back up. All right, folks, see you in a sec. OK, folks, so <clears throat> I've done the background. If you look really closely here, I refilled my pen because it ran out. And um, put my hair on it. The lid on this side got jammed. I hadn't realised, pulled it off, and the insert, the little sponge insert that's inside, that I'd just filled up, rolled onto the page. So, if you look through, you'll be able to see the little blue splatters. It went all over her skin. I was like, oh, marvellous. So I took my um, trusty colourless blender and went over it, so the page is still very wet, so I'm not going to be able to do anything there for the time being. But it did get it out. So if you ever have that happen, just sort of saturate it with your alcohol and it should go. Right, one more piece of alcohol marker before we do a little bit of colouring. And I want to put some colour on this rock. So I do now have my Ahuhu. So that's the only one um, that we're going to use that's not Ahuhu. Um, and this is Cool Grey BG038. And I'm going to do the rock in that. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but... I've got my, my thick acetate behind and I'm just going to, the paper takes an age to dry. So I really wouldn't recommend trying to colour over your alcohol markers until they're thoroughly dry. They just, they don't like it. Your pencils won't like it. So just give it the time that it needs to dry out. There we go, a little bit of alcohol. And also if you're a bit worried about going out of the lines, do your colouring first and then do the alcohol marker, you know, like our hair and things like that, because the um, wax will help repel the alcohol. Um, however, this paper's not too bad. It, doesn't, it does spread, but not a great deal at all. So I hope you can see that. So what I try and do is pick little sections like this, so that if I need to stop, which I'll stop to go off camera, um, you're not going to get blotches. You're not going to get patches where you have to go back over it. And it just helps to keep it nice and smooth. So I'll stop at that black line and then hopefully we won't get blotches. And then we can add pencil over this later, um, embellishments, whatever we like. Okay, so that is um, our grey pen for now. Let's have a look at the seaweeds. Now, this is going to be controversial, I know, but I'm going to do them blue, just because. I don't know, I liked it. I liked the combination. I thought it looked cool. I thought it will look cool. So actually, I'm going to move up here because there's some um, bigger leaves. So I've got midnight blue, I've got sea blue, and I've got robin egg blue. They will be on the screen. But for those of you that just like that sort of advanced warning, here they are. So we're going in with our darkest blue, which I can't remember, midnight blue. I'm going to put that at the bottom, let it fade out. And then we're going to use sea blue. And we're going to backtrack like we normally do, go over that little fading out patch, bring that up, and then let that fade out. Okay. And then we're going to go in with our robin egg blue at the top, the lightest bit. Isn't that a beautiful combination? So we'll just go back over, use our mid-tone to help blend that in a little bit better. There we go. So we're going to do another one together. And I'm going to do all of these the same. So I'm going in with our Midnight Blue. Let that fade out. So we've got a nice patch to put that next colour on, which I already can't remember. <laughs> sea Blue. And let that fade out. And then go back in with our Robin Egg Blue. Isn't that a pretty colour? 
So I would say this def this paper um, is is quite fussy. I did try my Black Widows. It didn't like it. Whether it was just me having one of those days, I don't know. But um, it definitely tends to lean towards the softer wax pencils. So your Prismas, I think perhaps... Um, let's do another one while I'm chatting. Um, your Prismas, perhaps maybe your, the black, Faber-Castell Black Edition. You know, the softer ones, softer wax pencils, I think would probably be better. Whereas, in my opinion, don't shoot me down, uh, Black Widows are slightly harder. Definitely harder than Arteza. Arteza are very smushy and soft. Okay. So that, if you can imagine, let me come out, is going to give us, what I, my vision it anyway, is that it's going to give us that sort of underwatery feel. We can put glitter on our tail. We can do whatever we want with the shell. Like we could put some um, glossy accents on it so it's shiny. Whatever we want to do because it's single-sided. So, big mammoth job. I'm going to go, I've left, left a little bit of blue there. I'm going to go, I'm colouring my grey rock and let it dry and do all my um, leaves and hopefully, still very wet, that page will be dry. All right, my lovely friends, see you in a sec. Okay, so I've done all the leaves. Um, I, I just love it with the blue background. I am going to put some little white bubbles maybe on it so it will lift it. But let's look at these little doodads. That I don't know what they're called. It's probably a simple explanation, but I just put in um, shellfish on Google and um, they came up. So... I'm going to do them in this manner. Let me just move my book up so we can get you in. Okay, I'll move you back in a minute. So at the moment I've got um, one, two, three, four, five colours. And we are going to use cream. We're going to use maybe a little bit of raw sienna. Um, some garnet red. And we are going to use pink macaroon and peony pink. So that's what we're going for. So to start with, I'm going to coat the entire thing in cream. Like this. Very simple to do. I'm not, um, there's nothing really fancy about this at all, so it should be really easy to follow. So, even his little tentacles, whatever they are, they're going to be cream too. Okay, then we're going to come in with our, let me just move these out of the way so I can keep them safe. Um, we're going to come in with Garnet Red and literally where um, Diane has given this dark colour, we're going to put that Garnet Red in. I'm going to try and keep my, I'll try and keep my thumb out of the way. So we'll get this beautiful rich colour on here. So I'm just following and going over that dark. We're going to do them all the same. So nice and dark over those. And then I'll show you. Can you see that? Yeah, just trying to keep my thumb out of your way. It's really hard when I come in really close. It's hard for you to see because of the way I hold my pencil because of pain. Okay, now I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there are these little tiny vein structures that aren't so dark. So this will come out much lighter, this garnet. And I'm just going to go over those. So you're going to need to keep turning your pencil to keep it sharp. Put a little bit of that in there. Let's 
So we get these little the little detail lines in there. And in there too. And then we can use our a little bit um harder pressure to go over the dark lines. Like this. Like that. Okay, and then for the face I'm taking, well this bit I'm calling his face or her face, I'm going to take a tiny, tiny bit of this raw sienna and I'm just going to put that in, just a tiny bit around here. And then we're going to go in with, which is the darkest, our peony pink. We're going to put that in over that. So we'll get this sort of rusty orange colour that will blend into our pink. I'm going to bring that out all over these little speckles. Okay, then we're going to go in with our pink macaroon. And then I'm going to go back over with our um, cream. And smush and blend all that together. Okay, let's just give that a little bit of a brush off. It's helped to blend that in. Right, I'm going back in with my palest colour, which is pink macaroon. I'll just go over that again. we go. And then cream. Okay, and for the little the tentacle bits, I'm going to take the two pinks, so the pink, uh, peony pink at the base of these little tentacles. Then we're going to go out into the um, pink macaroon and let that fade into the cream and then just a tiny tiny bit down here of the um, garnet red okay we're going to put a little bit of garnet red round here too so a little bit of garnet red up there I'm not really happy with that. Um, or did we use raw sienna, didn't we? On its own, it's a bit too. And then back in with the peony pink. Yeah, it's a bit too brown. So that should help. There we go. All right. <coughs> so. And then we just finish off his gorgeous stripes. And then although we haven't done, um, I'm going to do the heavy bits first. Although we haven't done a lot of shading or messing about with, but because Diane has given us such a beautiful design on here, just in my opinion, I don't think it will need it. So I'm just going to do all the dark bits and then I'll sharpen my pencil if need be and go back in and do all those fine vein bits. I can make that dark in there. Use the garnet in there. Okay. I'm just going to give it a quick turn in the pencil sharpener. Just very quick, and then I'm just going to make sure I've got all those fine line details. I mean, you could, if you've got fine liners, you could use fine liners for this.
There we go. There's one in here. Yeah. And then I'm going to make his eye. We're going to use the garnet. And then we're going to use the darker of the two, which is peony pink for the top of his eye. Okay, then I'm going to take, maybe I am going to take it. My desk is in a disarray as usual. Yeah, so I've got a white Posca. I'm just going to give his little eye a little white dot. And then I've got ivory, an ivory Posca. So all these little shapes, I'm going to go over with ivory. Just so they stand out. Like this. I'll have to let the Posca dry now before I finish off the tentacles, but um, I think it does look really quite effective. Put some little dots in. And then any that you're not happy with, I can go back in. I don't like how that's all joined up. I'll go back in with a bit of pencil and go back over that. Give him a little bit more dotage. Just trying to get rid of the black. Yeah. I think he's going to look really cool. So um, I think in, in this instance, I think less is more because we want our mermaid to be the focal point. So um, we've got all of these. I'm going to do this exactly the same. You can't see. Let me come out. There we go. So we've got a little bit of red pink going on in there, which means we can use different colours in here to keep it um, cohesive and pleasing to the eye. Um, so we're going to do exactly the same on all of these little fellas. But this little guy down here, um, we're going to have to put a little bit more colour in there. If I come in and show you again, because there's a different design on his body look. Sorry, stop the camera wobbling. Um, he's got less of the design drawn on. So um, I'm going to take the ivory. Can you see the splatter there? It's so annoying. But it came, it, there is a little tiny bit of shadowing. I don't know if you can see that. But it did come off her face and everything, so I was pleased about that. I had visions of having to start all over again, which would have been agonising. Okay, I can go over all of that. That whole thing's ivory, same as we did on the last one. Okay, then we're going to take our garnet red. And let's put these lines in and see what happens. See if we need any more. Let's see if we need to do any more to it or if we can just get away with soft garnet lines in there. Which I think we probably will actually. You could put some more pink in there if you wanted, but I really like the simplicity of him. And keeping... Diane's drawing of it. I mean, they are simple creatures, but... But this is a fantasy book, so we could do what we like. It's up to you, my lovelies. But I quite like that. So I might just... Just leave it as the, the garnet showing through and then do the same as we did for the tentacles. So one of these days I won't remember. I haven't used Arteza for years. Peony pink and it's a it's um it's criminal really because they are beautiful pencils. 
and then our pink macaroon and then the cream just fade that I'm just trying to go over that blob of blue and then back in with our red garnet just at the base of that there we go might need a little bit there okay and then on the face I'm going to put a little bit of raw sienna around the eye. Are you in? Yeah, you are in shot. A little bit of raw sienna up here, just so it matches, because we did that with the other one. Then we'll go in with our <laughs> um, peony pink. I'll start bringing that in. And our pink macaroon, go over that. Then go back in with our cream. That's what we did before, wasn't it? With our cream. There we are. And then we'll take the red garnet and come up round here. Okay. Deep round the eye. We'll leave this eye. Look, he's got a little white bit. We'll leave that. He's got a little black pupil on this eye. And then our peony pink for the top half. Okay, like that, let's just, I just want to add to this blend, so just going back in with the same colours, so oh, for the life of me, I oh, can't get it right, peony pink, and then pink macaroon, there we go. And I think, come up, see if I can cover that blue blotch. I could always put bubbles over it <laughs> if necessary. It's just very frustrating. Okay, and then I'll just go over with my, um, I'll just go over with my ivory Posca. Just to enhance that. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look where we are. Okay, I wanted to get those done first because some of those pencils we'll use for her skin. And you know what I'm like, I'll get them all jumbled and in a muddle. But if you look now at it, I think that real deep garnet red goes so well with the blue. It looks beautiful. So we might be able to incorporate that somewhere else too, like maybe on her robe or something like that. So it looks rich and royal. Okay, so I'm going to go off and finish my little prawny, squiddy things. <laughs> and um, I'll meet you back up here and we'll, we'll pay attention to some of her skin then, I think. All right, folks, see you in a sec. Okay, so I've finished all our little sea creatures. And I think it looks really effective against the blue. So before we do her skin, while I've got those colours and for the sake of ease of editing, we're going to do the shell. And I actually think, I mean, the garnet comes out so dark on these, um, it, it looks like a different colour. But I actually think if we use the same colours for the shell around her, it's going to be really effective. So let's give it a go. What, what have I got to lose, she says. <laughs> Hours of video. Right, so let's pick a spot. Let's just do it section by section. That's all nice and dry now. So if I go in with the cream... And if I'm just going to, like I say, take it section by section. So I've got a nice base of cream down there. I hope you can see that. Then we're going to go in with our peony pink. Um, and we're going to bring that out. I'm going to follow these lines with the peony pink. This is our brightest 
pink. So I want that in there. And we're going to use the garnet to deepen the, the darkest areas like that where the where the sort of shell tucks in. So I think that would be I think it'd be quite good fun. And it's gonna look very different against the um little sea critters because they haven't got it hasn't got the black on it. Okay, so let's make sure we've got enough of that because we need to put that garnet in to make that really deep. Okay, then we'll go in with our uh, pink macaroon, which is our playlist over that ivory, but not all of it. Let's just leave some, let's leave some ivory highlights in there. Go back in with our ivory now. So let's just blend that through and make sure that we've got that ivory coming through. We'll go back in with our um, macaroon. Let's just see if it works, folks. If it doesn't, I suppose there's always a raise and then use a darker colour. <laughs> a raise, alcohol marker and a darker colour. Okay, let's go in with our um, garnet red. So we want these bits here really defined in between each part of our shell. So let's put that in. Then we can come up bring that out. I haven't practiced this. I was just off camera thinking, well what am I going to do? What colours am I going to use? You know, like you do. Um, and I thought, well, actually, it's going to look very different to these little critters if we use the same colours. So I'm just playing and pulling out this garnet. We can just streak that in lightly over those darker lines that, that Diane's given us. And then we can go back in with our <laughs> peony pink. Drag that through. So it's probably going to take some time to colour. But it's get, once I've got used to how to do it, and once you get used to, you know, once you've done one section, it gets easier and easier because you know what you're doing. You know, it's just sort of practising colour, isn't it? We could always, even when we've finished, put some either a, a ready brown in there to really even deepen that up even more. We'll see. I don't want to overdo it. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, I quite like that. Shall we do this bit? So let's do this bit round here, round our shoulder. So in with our cream. Then our next colour, which I can't remember, is Peony. I don't know why I can't get this combination right, but probably because I haven't used them for such a long time. But let's bring that Peony Pink up. They've got really cool names, haven't they, the Arteza? You don't see a lot of them anymore. They used to be really, you know, really popular on YouTube. I'm not quite sure why we don't see them so much. There was a, a big hoo ha about. Um, them not being, them being water soluble, you know, so um, do be aware that if you're going to use water mediums with them just to test it, be careful. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that they colour beautifully. So, I never tried, I've never tried to um, dissolve them actually. Maybe I should have a go and see what happens. But I'm not, I, I like my, I love my ink tense pencils, but I'm not um, a huge, at the moment, um, fan of watercolour pencils, purely because I just don't really know what I'm doing with them. 
Right, so the garnet, let's go in quite carefully. We could like we can build that up. But we've got quite a big space going on here this time. So um it'll get quicker. Like I say, the more we do it and you get used to putting the colour in, it'll get quicker. Here we go. I mean this is already faster than I was at the last effort. I think it's going to look so effective and looks very, very different from our little critters, even though we've used the same combo. It's a madness, folks. I like playing with colour. I like mixing them up and, and seeing what different tones come out. There we go. And then we'll go back in with our... Uh, peony, just so that we get that pink in, and then we'll just blend through with a tiny bit of macaroon, leaving that cream in the centre. And then we can just go back in and deepen up that. Deepen up that um, those areas of garnet. There we go. All right. What is going on? Right, a bit of cream. Bring that through. You could always put a bit of white in there as well if you wanted, but I do. I think that'll give us. A really beautiful um, highlighted shiny shell look that's come out just so you can see let's get you all in if i can got my combo book in the way <laughs> there we go yeah i think that's going to look really effective yeah okay so i'm going to go off and finish the rest of the shell then we'll come and do her skin so i've got rid of that combination and don't have to worry about messing it up all right friends i'll see you in a sec She's all finished and I added a little bit of black just to the very deepest parts, just really sparingly. Just put some little strokes in like that. Um, just to sort of really bring out that the differentiation between the, the, you know, the bumps that you get in the shells, the segments. That's the word. God, I'm on fire tonight. Good gosh. What's going on? There we go. All right. So I promised we'd do the skin. Let's have a look at her skin. If I move her down here, let's see what happens. When I, yeah, there we go. Bring you in. There she is. Isn't she beautiful? So I've got, let's have a look. I've got peaches and cream. I've got marmalade orange. I know it sounds a bit weird, but it works. Pink macaroon, white, and a little bit of burnt ochre. They'll all be on the screen, so but I just like to run through with you, and it makes it easier for editing for me. So I'm going to take the peaches and cream, and we're just going to put that. Let's focus on her face, and so we'll do one bit at a time. So we're going to coat her face with peaches and cream. Even her little eyes white. Go over her mouth too. Okay, so I'm just lightly filling it in. Making sure I've got a good coat of that on her. Then where I want her face to be darker, I'm going to go in with the marmalade orange. So I'm going to go around her hairline. I know it looks a bit bright at the minute, but it'll tone down, trust me. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit round her hair and underneath this little eye where we've got this, um, Diane has um, already shaded there. A little bit round here, maybe a little bit there. Okay, so we're going to do that and then we're coming in with burnt ochre. So this has got a nice sort of ready hue to it. And we're going over where we put that marmalade. Just 
do it nice and lightly otherwise you'll end up she'll be um a, a very um interesting orange color okay and then we're going to go back to our peaches and cream and we're going to blend that through okay we're going to leave a little bit of section on her forehead a little bit lighter okay they do the um, smushing quite well and then we're going to take the pink macaroon which is the lighter one of the shell that we were using and I'm going to go over that shade round her nose and over that where it looks very orangey go over that a little bit round her chin it's a really very pretty colour Okay, bring that down a little bit. Let's give that a brush off. <coughs> Excuse me. Back in with peaches and cream. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white and just bring out that on her forehead. around there maybe go in let's go in with uh, the peony pink that we used sorry I didn't put that on the list but I think she needs a little bit more of a, a pinker cheek so that will should be on the screen as well peony pink there we go you can put a bit of that peony pink on her lips. I'm not going to do too much because the way it's drawn, they have a tendency to then just look really weird. Okay. Then I'm going back in with peaches and cream. Leaving that where I put the white in. Ah. She looks cute. Easy. Really, really easy. Let's do her neck together. Um, so peaches and cream. Just check I've got the right one, yeah. And we're going to do the same here. So I'm just lightly filling it in. And it's important to do it lightly so that you can get the different layers and colours in. If you're too heavy handed, you won't get all those colours in. Okay. Down her arm. Can you see everything? I'm, I'll shift you over a bit. And let's. So we're just getting a nice wax base down. You can see that little bit of blue there. That's very annoying. I mean, it did lift it up really well, but there's still a little tint there. But I was lucky with that um, alcohol marker. Okay. I'm just building up that colour. All right, then we're going to go in with our um, marmalade orange, where I want the shading. Now this bit in her neck is going to be darker. I don't know what you call that. That's the, the little dip on your throat. I'll come around here. We'll have a little shade there. We'll have some shadow in here and in that bit and then obviously round her well, toga her little outfit we'll put some shadow in there down on the inside of her arm and along her wrist in there and there and along that finger Okay, so let's now go in with our burnt ochre and we'll put that in. Like I say, be very sparing with it. Don't don't go overboard. 
Just gentle layers. You can always add more. Okay. And then around there. So we're just going to follow that marmalade. Down on the inside of our arm. Let's put a little bit on our elbow crease on that side. Make sure we've got enough on our neck. Round our arm. On a finger. Or a thumb rather. And in that little joint and a finger. Maybe that too. Okay. Then we're going to go back to our peaches and cream and blend all that. And then we can decide if we want more. So put that in. The weather tomorrow in the UK is supposed to be lovely. Um, so got my grandson and my son coming. Um, we're going to play in the pool. We've got, I want to say the pool, we don't have a swimming pool. We have a, a, a child's pool. <laughs> I'm not rich. Um, yeah, so we're going to play in the pool. He's very excited. I love having him over. He's, he's just at that beautiful stage. He'll be six in August. Um, like I said, I've said in another video, we're taking them down to our, our uh, caravan for a week's holiday with him. Um, and that'll be over his birthday, so memories being made, eh, folks? Memories. Okay, so we've got that far. Let's give that a brush off. Now I'm going to go in with that peony, uh, pink macaroon, sorry. And we're just going to change that tone a little bit. So the pink will help it tone to go a little bit more peachy and give her a, a nice glow. So I'm just going to, I'm going over the um, burn ochre and the marmalade orange and just bringing it out lightly into that peaches and cream. Okay. I think this is going to be a very long video. I hope you stick with me, folks. Okay. Right, back to peaches and cream. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to leave that bit a bit whiter, but that's okay. Going with our peaches and cream. So we're doing our smushing. Smoothing it out and trying to cover up that darn blue. Okay, let's get my white out now and let's go back over there. I wanted to keep that a little, a little bit lighter in there. Yeah, I'm pressing quite hard. And that just gives us a little bit of highlight on her skin. Tones it down a bit. All right, I'm back to my peaches and cream. And that is just for me to smooth out my colouring. There we go. All right, so we've done that one full arm together. Let's just brush her off. I'm quite happy with how she looks. Let's do her tummy down here. So peaches and cream. Then I'm gonna to have to go off and plan. I have no idea what color to do her tail or her hair. Haven't thought that far through. <laughs> okay, so let's take the orange. So we're gonna have a little bit of shade in here. And down there, 
Okay. Then we'll go in with our uh, burnt ochre. Bit of shading in there. And peaches and cream again, that helps to blend that through. And then our, what did we use? Pink macaroon, let's try that. Pink macaroon, yeah, pink macaroon. The peony was just for her face, for her cheeks. This is just to change the tone of that orange. Okay, give that a brush, sometimes a bit crumbly. Back to our peaches and cream. And then I'm going to take my, the white. And we just blend that through. Okay, let's do the other arm while we're here, shall we? Might as well. And then, um, and then I've done all the skin with you. So peaches and cream. Yeah, you can't see. Nice gentle coat of that. Then we'll go with the orange where we want the shadow. So in the crease of her arm, in there, around her little outfit, toga. We'll come up this side, bring that down a bit. We'll have a little bit round her elbow and up that side too. There we go, okay. Then over that we'll go in with our burnt ochre. So just the same as we've been doing. Nice and gentle layers. Okay, back to our peaches and cream to blend it through. There we go. Give that a brush off. Then we'll take our pink macaroon and do our tone changing again. Here we go. And then we'll take our white. Just give her some lighter areas. There we go. There we are, skin. Okay, let's come out and have a look a little bit. There she is, isn't she pretty? Actually really nice skin tone. Um, I'm just going to go back over with the pink on this bit. Looks very dark, but um, it will lighten up when you do whatever colour we're going to do that little her outfit. It will lighten up. There we go. So you can take some time. I won't carry on on camera because it takes um, it takes the forever, and then you get fed up with watching. So there we go. Very easy, simple skin for her. Now, let's come down and have a look at this rock. Do you remember right back at the beginning? We um, we basted it with alcohol marker. So I've got greys and I've got a tiny bit of green. So what have I got? I've got ash black, 
I've got koala grey. I've got steel grey, um, fog grey, and moss green. So basically four colours to do the greys and then a little bit of moss green so we can add some moss to it. So we're going to take our, we're going to start with our ash black and you can see the lines that Diane's given us. Now I'm taking those to be like behind or crags in the rock um, where the, so they would be the darkest. That's how I'm taking it to be. And what we're going to do is colour over that alcohol marker and we're going to work through our greys so that was ash black now we're going to take koala grey and gently blend that in and we'll get lighter as we come up and then um, steel grey so that it should just Fade away into that Ahuhu marker we used. Okay, and then what's this one? Fog grey, just a little bit of fog grey. And that should just blend right in to our original grey. There we go. Let's give it a brush off. Just go back in with our darker colour there. Just deepen that up. Okay, I'm going to do the same here. So, um, ash black. Just literally following Diane's drawing. And then fading it out. Then koala grey. It's a cool name, isn't it? Koala grey. Then... Um, steel grey and then the fog grey there we go so all of a sudden, then we've got a little bit of depth in those rocks. If we go over to this side, so I'm going to show you where I'm just going to drop some of that green in. If we go over to this side, um, let's take this line, for example. We're going to go in with our ash black. I think that's supposed to be... Um, I think it's supposed to be... What am I trying to say? Plant, anyway. Or moss there. But we're going to go in with our ash black. And then, as usual, work through our colours. So, koala grey. Then, steel grey. And then, our fog grey, just to blend that all through. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of this um, moss green and let's just gently drop that in. Okay, so we've got a little bit there. Let's put a little bit in there. Just so it looks like we've got a little bit of moss growing. We can do round her. So we can have, let's do um, a bit of shadow around here. So we're going in with our darkest grey. Bring that around the edge. Put it in there too. And then we'll take the next one, koala grey. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry.
once it starts, it just likes to take hold of uh, this cough and then, <clears throat> goodness me, it's not pleasant. Okay. Then we just go in with our um, lightest one and blend that through. <coughs> Which is why I'm just going back over with our, our steel grey. Why I've not done an awful lot of talking in this video because um, like sort of general chatter because it just starts this darn cough off. Okay, so we've got a little bit of shadow there for her and then you've got these little bits here. You could just drop some green in, not much. But we could just drop a little bit of the moss green in, just little places, just so it looks less flat. So we're going to carry that down with her tail. Same as we've done for that last bit. So underneath her tails, dark. And then we've got these ridges here, so I'm going to make them dark. There and there. And then we'll blend that through with the other greys. Same order. Just a smaller patch. It's like a little bit of shelving there. Um, and then back to our usual colours, just to give the shadow. Oh, goodness. There we go. I haven't done those, have I? Done the black and then haven't gone in with the, the other greys. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, gosh. Okay, and then the last grey, the palest grey, and then just let that gently fade into our alcohol marker colour. And if you don't have the alcohol markers, you could just use this one. So similar. There we go. Oh, I missed off that. Couldn't see, could you? Oh, and I've missed a leaf. Okay. Let me bring you out. Can you see that? So for the shelves, I just used the um, ash black. I'll show you here. Ash black. Just the same, really. Just made it, like, nice and dark at the top half of it. And then just worked through with our other colours. Just so it gives that illusion of um, stepping down. There we go. All right. There we go. So you can see that. Sorry about that, folks. So all I've got is this bit to do. Um, I'm just blending those colours through. So I'm gonna we're gonna do this bit dark down here. I'm gonna put my ash black in there because it's the deepest part of the rock, and then round the round the base here. Just put some in there, and you can just drop some green in if you want any more green in there. I just wanted a little bit, so just to add a little bit of interest to it. So it wasn't so flat. So 
So I'm just working my way through the colours again. Like that. And then steel grey. And then, of course, our last colour. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. Our last and light colour. <coughs> Folks, I'm going to go off and get a hot drink. Because this cough is not going to stop. Um, and I'll finish off. I'll finish off doing um, the rest of the rock, this little bit round here, and then we'll meet. We'll meet back up, and I hopefully we'll have a plan for our lady. All right, I'll see you in a second, folks. Right, guys. So the rock's finished. It is a couple of days later. I had so much going on, I couldn't get back to doing it. So let's get going. So I want to bring her to life. Um, and we're going to do our hair. I've got four colours to do our hair, and it's nice and simple. So if I bring you in, so we can get a good focus on her. Isn't she cute? Okay, so colours. I've got sapphire yellow, yellow ochre, camel brown, and I've got cinnamon. Can I just point out before I use this, this is the only pencil. Look how bad off call. Off centre, that core is. The only pencil like it. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you because somebody will, will notice while I'm colouring. Okay, so we are going to take. I'm just going to move that out of the way. We are going to take the sapphire yellow and we're going to coat her entire hair, nice and lightly, like we've done the rest. She's going to have golden hair. Seems as the rest of the page is not particularly, well, the plants aren't particularly traditional. I just like the colour combo that we've chosen. So we've got sapphire yellow. Now we're going to go in with our yellow ochre. And we're going to put, like, like we did for the shell, we're going to put that in where it's darkest and flick it up into that sapphire yellow. Let's do that one bit at a time. Then we've got camel brown, so we'll put that in. I'll flick that up, so it, just so it's not flat. We've got different colours in there. And then we'll take our uh, cinnamon, which is my one that's off core, off off core, off centre, and we'll just flick some of that in. There we go. Not too much of a faff and fuss. So then we'll do, we'll go back to this part of our hair and we'll put some um, yellow ochre in. There we go, and then we'll get the camel brown and we'll flip that in. In just some of the dark, where, where it'll be darker so it's tucked underneath. And then we'll take our <coughs> Excuse me, cinnamon, and we'll pop some of that in. And then we can go back to our sapphire yellow and just blend that through. There we go. So let's do the next bit. So we're going to take our yellow ochre. And flick that through here. Then our uh, camel. They will be on order on the screen, so I don't have to worry about whether I've got it right or wrong. <laughs> then um, our cinnamon. Okay. For beautiful golden hair. We're going to do the same in the same order. The side of our hair.
we're just flicking those bits in and then putting the um, cinnamon where the darkest spots are. So underneath that little flick of her hair, in there, we can put some cinnamon just to sort of highlight that, those flicks. There you go. And then we're just going to do this bit underneath. So I'm going to put the light bits in first as we've done all the way along, but this bit probably be a little darker. Okay, there we go. Let's make sure I've got that in round her face. And then we're going to come in with our cinnamon. Make that dark in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this section is take it section at a time. So I'll do this one with you. We are literally, I'm going to colour that one section. Can you see those sections of hair? And do it section at a time. That way you can keep your lights and darks where you want them without being overwhelmed. We're going in with the same orders. And I'm following Diane's lines, look. I'm bringing out that colour where she's got those strokes of hair to indicate strands of hair. Bringing that out as far as I want. There we go. And then we're going with our darker colour and not come out as far. Or oh, mid colour, sorry, should I say. And then our darker colour. Put that dark in around that division so it shows that it's underneath the other bits of hair. Like that. And there we go. Easy. Nice and easy. We can go back in. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of that camel brown. And just bring that out and down a little bit more. There we go. Got a bit of brush off. Okay. So I'm going to go and finish um, the hair in exactly the same fashion. Let's come out and have a look. She's beginning to come alive. And then I will be back and we're going to do the toga on her beautiful tail. See you in a sec. Golden hair all complete. Isn't she beautiful? Very pretty girl. Okay, now we're going to do this tail together. I'm just getting my practice one in here. Now I'm going to do her bright. She's going to be sort of turquoisey blue green, just so that she fits in with the page. So you might go, oh my God, Lucy, what are you doing? But honestly, it looks really cool. I've just got three simple colours here. So I've got um, a GN blue, shamrock green and spring green. It just works. Um, I just thought it looked really pretty. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going in with spring green and I'm going to put that on this leg where I want the highlights kept because that's going to be our lightest colour. It's a very bright colour. Um, but, like I said, it works. I'm just going to lightly put in where I want this light green to be so I can keep that. And then we can go in with our darker colours and, and play and smush. Now, I did have a question on my comments about what did smushing mean? <laughs> lots of people use it, apparently, and um, lots of people say smushing, but this person didn't know really what it meant. Well, in my mind, um, I would say that smushing is, are they soft and squidgy? Do they, can you push them together on the page? So... It's just blending, really, but um, some pencils will smush better than others. So I've put in where I think I want my highlights. And I will go back in and play with that again at a later date. So now I'm going to go in with my Aegean Blue. Let's come in a little bit closer. There we go. And I'm going to put where I want all my dark bits to be. So see, this is very similar to the plants. but it won't be when we add the greens. So I'm just putting this in. Oh, oh, it's a toga, I thought I'd missed hair. Okay, so bear with me on this, because you're gonna be thinking, oh, it's, she looks exactly the same as the plants. 
but she won't. I'm just plotting out where I want the dark colours to go. And we can always come back and add more, like we do anyway usually, don't we? So I'm just putting this in quite lightly. And then I'm going to start fading that out. Okay, and bring that down here. All right, we are going to go back over that, so I know it looks scruffy. But so now I'm going in with the shamrock green, and I'm going to start backtracking and blending this in. So she will be more green than blue, well, more turquoisey than blue. Okay, so we just have to keep working at that, bringing that out. So hopefully you can see this is a good example of smushing. <laughs> they are smushing together, just blending really. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. And then I'm going to start to bring that out lightly into that um, spring green that we've used. I'm just going to do one little section at a time. Let me brush off those crumbs. We'll do this side. Oh, making my hand ache. I suppose I could have put an alcohol marker in there to base it, but I really liked the change of colour that these two, these three pencils gave when they were worked together. So um, that's why I didn't put a base of alcohol marker underneath it. Okay, right, let the hand relax. I'm going to go back in with my dark blue, a Zia, a Gian blue. We're just going to help that along, tidy that up. Okay. Then back in with our mid toe, which is the shamrock green again. So it will work, it's just being patient and having a hand strength to do it. My heart, my arm's aching. But, um, and then we're going to fade that gently into that spring green. Just gently. Right, let's get the spring green in there now. So this will change everything completely. And we'll get that gorgeous highlight in the centre that I wanted. Let's 
it's going to take a bit of working so don't be looking at it and going oh my god that's so scruffy lucy but i just liked this tone that it gave us like this sort of almost iridescence to her that's me being far-fetched she's not iridescent by any stretch of the imagination but it was what sprung to mind when i put these colors together let's give her a brush off and see where we are now okay so we're going to go back in with our our um shamrock green and i'm just playing till it's neatened up We've got a nice tidy blend. Before I move on to the next section. So back in with our dark blue. Let's really deepen that up. Put some pressure on there. Okay. She's getting there. <coughs> so you get this sort of, because of the, um, spring green you get this sort of bluey turquoise yellow coming through and it's really pretty and she stands out there although she's not too different to the page she will remain the focal point then hopefully rather than just sort of blending into the background okay let's do the rest of her tail i can i can play and mess off camera so I'm going to make this side of her tail darker. So I'm going to bring the blue up around here. I don't know why I'm making the side of her tail blue, darker, but it just works in my head. So that's what I'm sticking with. So we're going to bring that out. Okay, we're going to take our shamrock green and start pushing that in. Can you see what I'm doing? I hope my hand's not in the way. Okay. I didn't put, if you notice, I didn't put the um, spring green down first because I'm kind of pretty certain where I want those colours to go now. And it's going to follow this uh, this side. So I'm going to get that in. And then I'm going to drop the spring green in now. Isn't that pretty? Well, it will be when it's all blended pretty anyway. It's a bit scruffy at the minute, but back to our shamrock. And let's make sure we get that in. And obviously I will take some time smoothing this all out but I just wanted to show you how I did how I did the tail when I practiced okay. and if you get that really dark blue in there it really shows up that difference between the the colors and you get this sort of like I say, almost in my mind, sort of iridescent colour change in her tail. Oh, I hope you're sticking with me. This is going to be a marathon video, folks. Spring green. We'll go back over and tidy this up. Okay, back to our shamrock. I'm just tidying it up now. I don't want you to... I don't want you to think, oh my God, Lucy, what a mess. But I'll continue to play off camera and doing all the blends and everything. Let's do her tail. So I'm turning her around. So 
And the reason being is I'm going to take this section by section like we did the um, hair. So I'm going to put in where I want my highlights. Let's see, I have a little bit around here. Definitely up the front here. Maybe a little bit around there. We'll see, it might change as I go along, but there we go. All right, see, really scruffy. I'm going to go in my dark Aegean blue and I want the tip of her tail really nice and dark. So we're going to put that in. And then I'm just going to let it fade out as we get up closer to that spring green. We're going to bring it up a little bit higher here. So I'm just kind of sort of mapping out where I want the colour at the minute. And then, as you saw before, we'll go back in and tidy up. Okay, I want the dark coming around here from this side of her tail. And let's, maybe better off doing some of the shamrock green in there to show the difference in colour. We're getting there. Okay, I'll bring that up, let that fade out. Okay. Shamrock green, let's put that in. And we can bring that up into that spring green because we'll go over all of that. And we know that that works. So bring it down to meet this blue here. I'm basically now just filling the gaps. And then we'll go back over with it all, tidy it up, blend it properly. Bring some of that shamrock green into there. There we go. All right, I think, bring a bit more of that green down here. So I think now it's just a case of me going back over. So I'm gonna keep going with my shamrock green. And then we'll go back over with the blue. And making sure all the tooth of the paper's filled in. And she looks gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna put the spring green in. And then what we'll do is just tidy up those blends. Okay, let's go back in with our dark blues. Let's make that nice and rich and dark where we want it. We can gently help to blend those two in together. So there's no sudden dark lines. Okay. Sorry, I'm not very chatty on this part. I'm just trying to um, uh, think about what I'm doing, focusing on what I'm doing for a minute. Sorry. Uh, 
So I'm just deepening up all the spaces we put the dark blue and helping that colour come out by just gently fading it in like we always do. Okay, back in with our shamrock green. And really push and smush those colours in together. Yes, my hand is aching. <laughs> Holding my pencil like I am. It's hard work, this colouring malarkey, you know. Okay, let's give that a brush off and have a look. Okay, so now I can see where the areas I still need to fill in. Just gone out of the line a little bit there, which would really annoy me. So... I'm just softly bringing that blue in and that will help take away any sort of stark lines that I've got. There's a little bit up here. Okay, back in with our shamrock green. And then I'm just, so what I'm doing is just keeping going with the blends until it all smooths out. It's quite a big space for my painful hands. Okay, and then we'll go back in with our Um, spring green. Okay, so she should stand out. I will finish blending and smoothing it out all off camera so you don't have to watch, but look at that. And then if we put some sparkles on her, she is going to look iridescent. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Right, now, um, let me go off camera and smooth her out and I'll show you what she looks like afterwards and then we'll meet back up and just do the finishing touches. All right, friends, see you in a sec. Okay, she's so nearly there. We're touching distance. So we're just going to do a headband and the band around her body and tail and her little toga dress. And I'm going to do it in the blues that we did the seaweed in. I know you might think I'm mental, but... So just to recap, they'll be on the screen, but Midnight Blue, Sea Blue and Robin Egg Blue. So I'm going to take Robin Egg Blue and I'm going to cover her toga. And it should just help to tie everything together like she's part of the scene. She may have used seaweed to make her toga. You never know. These things happen. <laughs> in my mythical mermaid world anyway. Okay, so we've got a little bit of robin egg blue going on there. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, we're also going to do it around here. There we go. Okay, so we've got a very light coat of robin egg blue going on. Now I'm going to go in with my midnight blue and put in the creases where I want them in her dress. So I'm just following, again, following Diane's work. And then let it fade out because we're going to put that next colour in, which is sea blue. Push all those in together and then back in with our robin egg blue. That's smushing. Did you see that? How they just all become merge and become one blend. That's smushing. So just back in with my colours. 
play around with it until you're happy with that color change. There we go. And then, right, let's do this bit. So I'm going to have some dark around her shoulder where the material folds over. And then I'm going to bring that down. Obviously, follow that crease line and that one. I should have perhaps put this into two parts, but I don't think people really, um, they don't tend to watch the second part as much. So, and if you're going to follow along, you'll be watching the video. I just find it, sometimes it's just very frustrating to be going and finding the second video, isn't it? So, you'll have to bear with me. And I want to get this up to you. So, um, editing and stuff for two parts would take twice as long at the moment. And with things, things just keep cropping up and I don't get back up here doing the colouring that I want to do. So, I thought we'll just keep going. So, I'm now putting my mid-tone in. And then we're going to put, go back in with our Robin Egg Blue. And use that to help push all those colours together. Technically known as <laughs> smushing. There we go. We'll give it a brush off. And then we'll do the same. We'll follow this crease. We'll have a little bit of dark here. We'll follow this crease down. There we go. And this one. Okay. Brush that off. It's very, they're very crumbly today. Okay, we'll go in there with our sea blue. Is that? Yeah. Push those in together. And then back over with our robin egg blue. Simple. We just use that to help push all the colours together. I'm just going to push that up there it's a little tiny bit. There we are. And then let's do around here. So we're going to have the dark blue here. That's underneath and round her bottom. Then our sea blue. Then we can bring in that robin egg blue up there. And then, so basically just follow, following the creases, but we're nearly done, so we'll stick at it together. Now, I'm thinking that I am going to put on her tail some Mod Podge Extreme Glitter. I'm a bit concerned about doing it, because if the rumours are true and I haven't tested, um, our teaser pencils can respond to water. So I don't know whether it's the best plan to do it or not after having spent all this time colouring it. You know, if they all bleed in together, that would just be awful, wouldn't it? So I'm just using the same order, following where I put the dark, and leaving a space for our robin egg blue to go back in. There we go. Okay, we've got a little headband here, which we'll do just dark at the edges. And then we'll bring in our sea blue. And we'll leave out the robin egg blue, just so that's a nice dark band. And then round her waistband here, we're going to have dark at the bottom, coming from her toga. I don't know if it's well, I suppose it could be a toga, couldn't it? And then sea blue. And then a little bit of robin egg blue. Okay. There we go. All right, let's come out and have a look. 
Isn't she beautiful? I love it. I just love the colour combinations. I really do. I think it's really pretty. Okay, now, so I've got Mod Podge Extreme Glitter. Comes. I just got it from the works in the UK, but it looks white like PVA glue, and then you paint it on and it goes clear. So, um, okay, we've got a couple of bubbles here. So I'm going to take a white Posca pen, and I'm just going to do that one. We'll get one smaller and another one smaller. We'll do it this side. Can you see? Yeah, take that one out. Another little one, another little one. We'll leave it at that. I don't want to overdo it. The page is very busy. Okay, deep breath, folks. Let's try. Let me get a paintbrush. Hmm. Bear with me a second. Okay, got a paintbrush. And if you're using this stuff, make sure you wash your paintbrush off afterwards. So I'm literally just going to dip it in. Right, where shall I do? Shall I do the tail first? And then if it merges. You probably won't be able to see the glitter until it's dry. But it seems to be okay. So see what I mean? It goes on white and it will dry completely clear. Just like it probably is a PVA glue with lots of lots of glitter in it. So we just paint her on. Be brave, Lucy, be brave. Would have been very easy just to walk away actually and say, no, I'm not putting any glitter on here. At the risk of it all running. But... And I could have used stickles, but can you imagine how much stickles this would have taken? Quite a lot. This will dry completely clear, but it will be beautifully, beautifully sparkly. Okay, I'm just going to smooth that off. And then I'm going to turn the camera off, let it um, dry. And then hopefully I can show you the sparkles when she's done. Okay, don't push your luck, Lucy. You've managed to... There is some blue. There is some blue that's come off. Look, I don't know if you can pick up on that. Just a tiny amount. But... Okay, so I'm going to go off and dry this or let it dry. And then I'll come back and we'll meet back up and we'll see what she looks like. See you in a sec. Okay, here she is. I've dried her off with a um, heat gun just so that she's dry enough for me to lift her up and show you. So... I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know if you're going to be able to, if I move out the light, if you can pick up that. I don't know. Let me um, move my lamp. Oops, sorry. There you go. So it dries like a... PVA like shiny and then you've got the glitter in there too I hope you can pick up on that I really do because it is such beautiful stuff so um where did I put it here just to show you again it's Mod Podge Extreme Glitter that I used now I was going to put um some glossy accents which is a just a clear gloss that will dry on the shell but um, I'm a bit concerned about then colouring. I know it's single-sided, but I'm a bit concerned about colouring on other pages. But I might do that, so you might see it in a finished pages video if I ever get my finger out and do enough colouring. Um, but I'm really pleased. I hope you love the page. I adore the colour scheme. I think it just... I love the simplicity of the background. You could put some shading in around her, but I'm not going to. I just like it as it is. I like the simplicity of Diane's drawings and I want to keep it that way in that style. So I hope you've enjoyed this mar marathon video. <laughs> and um, I've been sent another new book, which I'm very, very excited about. I am working on Dream Rays, but I have to, um, I've got to get it right because it's such a beautiful book. So I am working on that. I haven't forgotten.
and I've been sent um, a new book, so we'll be doing a colour along in there too. So anyway, I'll let you go. I've rambled and kept I've kept you long enough. Thank you so much for sticking with me. If you haven't, you've got this far. I really hope you like her. So until we meet again in the very near future, my friends, take really good care of yourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs>